Okay, so the purpose of this video is to get us used to the idea of instantaneous rate of change, or just the slope or the rate of change at a specific point on a function. And we want to talk about how we compute this, how we calculate it, and this will eventually become our basis for finding the derivative of a function. So let's get started just by drawing a graph of some function, we'll call it f. And the motivation here is that we'd really like to know if we just pick any point on this graph of f, what is the slope at that point? How is the function changing at any point x? So there are probably so many reasons why people care about change, about rates of change, but I just want to give a little bit of my own insight here. I think that we care about rates of change because we want to know how things are going to go in the future. So we want to know, based on what information I have, what's going to happen next. So what is the rate at which things are going to change? So rates of change are valuable because they tell us how things are changing and they help us predict behavior. Moreover, if we know some information about something, so we have a function that represents it, finding the rates of change can help us understand a lot about the function. So it can tell us where it's increasing, where it's decreasing, how it changes over time. We can get lots of information about a function using its rate of change. I'm truly not doing it justice, just how important studying the rate of change of a function is, and hopefully you at least understand that this is an important thing we want to consider. Okay. So we want to compute the rate of change at any point x with the output f of x. So to do this, we're going to do our best and approximate the rate of change at that point. We're going to pick another point and make a line going through the point we're interested in and this new point we just drew. So this line we've drawn here is called a secant line. So the word secant actually comes from a Latin word that means to cut. So that's a nice way to remember it. It's kind of cutting through the function. We are just taking two points and finding a line through them. So we're trying to find the slope of this secant line as our way to approximate the rate of change at x. So let's look at these two points and find the slope between them. So the secant line has a point at some value x plus h. We're going to call this x plus h just meaning that we went over by some value h. We're trying to do this in general so that it applies to any function and any distance between those two points. Then, since our input is x plus h, it has a corresponding output f of x plus h. So now we have our two points, it's x f of x and x plus h f of x plus h, and we can use these to find the slope of the secant line. So we want to find the change in the y, the change in the output, divided by the change in the input. So this is f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by x plus h minus x. And then we can simplify the denominator, the x's cancel, that x minus x, so we're just left with divided by h. So we found the slope of this secant line, but we want to find the slope specifically at the x f of x. You can tell that this particular secant line doesn't totally match the slope at that point. So how do we make this more accurate? Well, if we choose a point that's closer to our original point, so instead of going all the way over to where we are now, we could choose a point that's a little bit closer. We're still going to call this value h that we've gone over. I'm just going to show it on the graph that we've moved it closer. So let's suppose that initially we just chose a better point. We chose one that was closer to our x value we were looking for. Specifically, we're choosing a smaller h value. So you can imagine that we continue to do this. We continue to make h smaller and smaller until we get as close to the original point as possible. So hopefully this makes sense conceptually, but how do we do it mathematically? Well, what we're going to do is use what's called a limit. So the limit allows us to send the h, that h value between the two points, as small as possible. It makes it infinitely small. The limit can do that. So we're sending the distance h to zero. By sending h to zero, this means the two points are as close as possible. And once this happens, once the points are as close as possible, we're left with what is called a tangent line. So tangent also comes from a Latin word meaning to touch. And so this is the line that is touching that point at just one spot. And it perfectly represents the slope of the function at that point. 
So we have our slope of the secant line and we're taking the limit of that slope and sending h to zero. So we're sending the distance between the two points to be as small as possible to zero. And what we're left with is this formula that represents the slope of the tangent line. So this tangent line that we've drawn, the slope that it has is given by this limit. So it doesn't look like it anymore, but we still have two points. They're just infinitely close together and we are calculating the slope between those two points. So we are able to say that the rate of change at the point x f of x is found by looking at the slope of the tangent line at that point. So every point will have its own tangent line that represents the slope at that point, and the rate of change is the slope of that line. All right, so I just want to highlight one more thing. If you've encountered the notion of average rate of change, the slope of the secant line is really that average rate of change. We're taking two points and calculating the average slope between them. However, the slope of the tangent line finds what we call the instantaneous rate of change. So the words instantaneous and rate of change kind of seem like a paradox, but it's just the word that we use to describe the rate of change at one instant in time, at one point. So this is the idea of how we find the instantaneous rate of change, and we are going to use this to define our derivative. So the derivative is what we are going to use to call the instantaneous rate of change, and you can watch my next video to hear more about that and see what the next steps are. Awesome, well, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.